General, we have the Warsaw Summit coming up and one of the most significant things there is the strengthening of the NATO's eastern flank. How significant is this strengthening? Uh, it is uh, in uh, many, uh, many levels and many ways. Um, I would like to first say that uh, uh, the need to strengthen eastern flank uh, doesn't come uh, from uh, uh, NATO decision only. Uh, because NATO uh, uh, has to uh, react and adapt on development of security situation. And uh, uh, with the uh, three core tasks of the Alliance, uh, the collective defense crisis management and cooperative security, NATO was mainly focused on crisis management in the uh, uh, last uh, two decades. And uh, if uh, there were no uh, increase uh, in uh, Russian assertiveness uh, demonstrated in actions uh, uh, in uh, Georgia, in uh, Ukraine, Crimea, in Syria, there uh, wouldn't have to be a reaction from NATO side. So uh, NATO and especially NATO Eastern allies uh, feel threatened by uh, Russian assertiveness, Russian aggression in, uh, in several areas. And uh, especially nations uh, uh, which are uh, directly bordering Russia uh, wanted to be more assured about uh, NATO presence, uh, and NATO uh, willingness uh, and uh, preparedness to act. So uh, NATO has decided uh, in uh, Wales uh, to strengthen uh, uh, its uh, collective defense uh, and within collective defense even forward presence. And uh, this reaction, uh, based on uh, NATO being a uh, defensive uh, uh, organization, is proportionate, is uh, definitely uh, well below uh, the levels of military buildup uh, on Russian side. And it is mainly aimed uh, at uh, assuring the uh, population of our Eastern allies that uh, NATO uh, is uh, with them uh, and NATO will react whenever necessary. And it is also to pass a clear message uh, to uh, Russia that uh, should uh, Russia take any offensive action, even limited, against uh, the territories of our allies to the east, uh, NATO as an alliance will act. But will countries like Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, will they really be safer? They uh, will be safer. Uh, we are not uh, here talking about uh, a kind of a total defense. Uh, we are not uh, uh, talking in terms of uh, uh, robust uh, military deterrence uh, against uh, conventional uh, Russian attack. Uh, I, I believe that we are far from that. Uh, but uh, what uh, these allies uh, want to be sure uh, that uh, uh, should Russia decide uh, to take uh, uh, action similar to Crimea, similar to eastern Ukraine, that uh, they will be ready and uh, able to act. And uh, since uh, their militaries uh, are obviously quite small given the size of the country, they uh, have to uh, rely more on, on the alliance. They take the, uh, their own measures, they uh, all increased uh, their defense spending, they are building their own militaries, they are modernizing, but they also, uh, also ask allies uh, to uh, be more present. And, uh, and NATO allies uh, in Wales uh, decided uh, to uh, uh, create this uh, VJTF concept uh, with a, a rapid reaction element. They also decided uh, uh, to have uh, rotational exercises in all these countries. They decided uh, to invest into a modernization of infrastructure. And it all serves uh, this uh, dual purpose. Uh, on one hand, assurance. On the other hand, deterrence uh, to uh, any potential uh, aggressor uh, to their territories. But won't an increased NATO presence in these countries just make Russia more aggressive? And also, where does this leave countries such as Ukraine, Belarus and Moldova? Will they not feel more Russian pressure because of this build-up? These are uh, two uh, different uh, strands of thinking. If uh, we uh, accept uh, that uh, Russia, and based uh, on the evidence uh, coming from their behavior and actions uh, in the uh, last uh, months and years, uh, Russia uh, respects power. Russia uh, sees a uh, uh, liberal approach, uh, democratic approach, discussion, compromise as a weakness. And I believe uh, that until Russia uh, keeps uh, that, uh, that um, attitude, uh, we have to show uh, determination, we have to show uh, the strength, uh, we have to show our uh, resolve uh, to act whenever necessary. 
So uh, we are trying uh, not to escalate. We are trying uh, always to uh, stay below uh, the measures uh, taken on Russian side. But at the same time, uh, we want to uh, demonstrate that we are ready and willing to act if we have to. But how big is the Russian threat? Well, we can uh, see uh, um, Russian uh, military uh, build up uh, from uh, the news uh, from open sources. Uh, they uh, regularly release information on uh, building new formations, on uh, getting new equipment, uh, on uh, establishing new bases. And uh, uh, we have uh, plenty of evidence uh, from uh, our own intelligence as well as from open sources about uh, new units uh, built uh, in the proximity of uh, our eastern borders. Uh, we have uh, plenty of evidence uh, fr uh, about Russian uh, military activities, uh, exercises uh, and especially SNAP exercises, uh, which is a kind of specialty on the Russian side. Uh, uh, increased activity in the air, uh, on, on sea, on the ground, and also in cyberspace. So I believe that uh, for everyone uh, who uh, wants to take just a couple of minutes, uh, uh, that everyone will find a lot of evidence even on the internet about uh, Russian presence, Russian military buildup, Russian activities. You're also, NATO is also conducting lots of exercises in, in the Eastern Allies right now. How important is it to do su such exercises on a regular basis? Exercises uh, primarily serve uh, several purposes. Uh, uh, the first one is to uh, train own forces uh, in uh, activities uh, necessary for defense. And I'm stressing uh, for, for defense. Uh, second is uh, to uh, send a message uh, to own population that our forces uh, paid by our taxpayers are ready to protect uh, their interests and their security. And third uh, is uh, to uh, send a message to our potential opponents uh, that we are ready and determined. Uh, secondary effect uh, of uh, these exercises, uh, uh, especially those uh, which are open uh, to our partners, is uh, uh, an increase uh, in interoperability. Uh, and we regularly train uh, with uh, many of our partners uh, um, based on the same standards. Uh, and um, we are now able to uh, cooperate uh, with uh, quite a lot of uh, different nations from um, different continents. Uh, in fact, uh, building on uh, a level of interoperability uh, achieved, uh, especially during uh, the operations like Afghanistan. And we are trying to develop uh, that um, interoperability uh, for, uh, for case uh, where either partner or we will need to act together. You mentioned public outreach as well, that this is important. But is it working though? I mean, I was thinking about, especially about your own country, where there is some skepticism about NATO. Have you seen that exercises in Czech Republic have, have made the Czechs, for example, more, more positive towards NATO? We will always uh, see both the positive and the negative uh, assessment of uh, uh, NATO and its activities, even in, uh, within uh, NATO uh, NATO allied countries. Um, that's uh, democracy. We can uh, openly express our views and that's uh, what people do. Uh, but uh, generally, uh, there is a majority of people, and I will be talking about my own country, um, supporting our membership in NATO and related activities. And uh, the transport of uh, military units uh, across our territory are part of uh, these exercises, are part of our membership in NATO. And uh, uh, from uh, what I have seen uh, during uh, uh, the convoy I witnessed, and uh, public perception was uh, really very warm and uh, they were welcoming soldiers. So they uh, enjoyed uh, having discussions with them, uh, seeing their equipment. So in general, I, I believe that uh, the impact uh, of uh, these uh, convoys uh, is positive. I'm just going to press you on one question that I asked before. Uh, where does this build up? Uh, on the eastern flank leave countries such as Ukraine and Moldova and possibly also Georgia because you know that they are feeling pressure from the east but will they not be caught in the middle right now? The situation with these countries uh, is uh, different than uh, with allies obviously because uh, as uh, uh, non-allies they are not covered by article 5. But at the same time all these countries you have mentioned uh, are uh, part of uh, uh, different uh, formats of partnerships. Georgia, Ukraine, uh, Moldova, all our partners uh, with uh, whom uh, we have uh, quite an extensive cooperation in many ways. Uh, financial, uh, military, technical, uh, methodological, uh, 
Uh, we uh, um, assist uh, their forces uh, to uh, be more capable uh, through training, uh, through advising. Uh, we have um, um, uh, plans uh, for uh, cooperation with every uh, one of uh, these uh, three nations. And as a result, uh, they will also be safer through this cooperation, through in, uh, enhancing uh, their defense ca uh, capabilities. And uh, also uh, through uh, uh, the experience and uh, sharing best practices uh, with NATO countries. So uh, we cannot provide them the guarantee of Article 5, but we can, uh, we can provide uh, them uh, uh, different levels of assistance to increase their own capabilities. General, thank you very much. Thank you.